Whether you operate one forklift or thousands, one location or hundreds, the new My Toyota customer portal can help you optimize your operation and material handling equipment. This one-stop, free-to-use platform is designed to help you take control of your information and make smarter decisions, all at the touch of a button. Register and access your data today at my.toyotaforklift.com. That's my.toyotaforklift.com. With e-commerce off the charts, many small and growing warehouses are asking, how can I get ahead when my warehouse is barely keeping up? The answer is future-ready warehouse tech from Zebra Technologies. Warehouses can simplify and upgrade all processes, from automated inventory management to hands-free picking, with Zebra's tailored, scalable mobile solutions. They're simple and intuitive. There's never been a better time to upgrade for success with Zebra. How can your warehouse get ahead? The answer's in black and white. Get the answers at zebra.com slash the answer. That's zebra.com slash the answer. Businesses are retooling fulfillment operations from warehouses to omnichannel to meet new demand amid unprecedented labor shortages. 3PLs, retailers, B2B distributors, and others are turning to flexible fulfillment solutions like Six River Systems to adapt and scale. Six River Systems Fulfillment Execution System is an integrated solution that combines intelligent, cloud-based software and automation, including its autonomous mobile robot, AMR, Chuck. No costly or disruptive infrastructure changes, fast and easy associate training, and integrations with other warehouse execution solutions allow operations to meet labor challenges, increase efficiency, and enhance customer engagement. Go to www.sixriver.com to learn more. Go to www.the6river.com to learn more. How do you create warehouse superheroes? The answer is simple, with visual voice scan solutions from ProCensus. With record demand and labor shortages, warehouses need more effective workers and lightning fast onboarding. Visual voice scan solutions from ProCensus enable warehouse workers to achieve superhero performance with up to 20% improved productivity and up to 99% accuracy. Hands-free barcode scanners from ProGlove paired with wearable mobile computers is just the beginning. Improved mobile interfaces with reduced keystrokes, easy to read screens, custom keyboards, voice enabled interface, and more can be realized with ease on the leading WMS platforms. Sound too good to be true? Let us show you with our one-of-a-kind virtual demo. Visit ProCensus.com to get started today. Again, that's ProCensus.com to get started. The New Warehouse Podcast, hosted by Kevin Lawton, is your source for insights and ideas from the distribution, transportation, and logistics industry. A new episode every Monday morning brings you the latest from industry experts and thought leaders. And now, here's Kevin. Hey, it's Kevin Lawton with the New Warehouse Podcast here at Modex 2022. I am in the booth and joined by Daniel Theobald, who is the founder and chairman of Vecna Robotics and also the co-founder and president at Mass Robotics. So busy guy, definitely, right? So Daniel, welcome to the, the booth. Welcome back onto the show. It's great to connect again. How are you? Yeah, I'm doing great. It's always great to be here, Kevin. We always have such interesting conversations. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I think Modex 2020, I think maybe was the last time that we, we spoke. A, a um, lot has happened since then. Yes, a lot has happened. <laughs> yes, yes. And I will say it was probably one of the, I think it was one of the most interesting conversations I had had there at the at the show. So so it's great to have you back here uh, two years later. And, you know, as you've been been around the Modex and Pro Match shows and things of that nature, I mean, how do, how do you think it is now uh, two years after? Well, it's an incredibly exciting time to be able to get out and see people. The number of robots here right. has just absolutely exploded. Yeah. I was just talking to somebody earlier and you know their comment was, this is no longer a logistics show, it's a robotics show. <laughs> now that's not entirely accurate, yes, obviously, yeah, yeah. but it just goes to the, the focus on automation is mm-hmm. clear and, and overwhelming now. Right, yeah. And I think it just goes to this issue that, you know, people realize that logistics, you know, modern logistics, you just can't compete without automation. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's definitely the the case. And, you know, you look at so many of the things that have been going on in the past two years, especially in our industry, you know, 
automation and robotics have kind of almost for for some organizations some companies become a necessity just to just to survive and keep up with the demand that they're experiencing so so why don't you give us just a, a little brief overview of vecna we'll talk about vecna first and then we'll get into some mass robotic stuff as well yeah sounds great the show today we're actually launching a new product that we're mm-hmm. very excited about the cpj copa cobot pallet jack okay you know vecna robotics has unambiguously the the highest performing mm-hmm. automated forklift in the industry. Right. We operate at speeds of three meters per second. We've mm-hmm. got an incredible safety system that allows it to drive around obstacles very right. quickly rather mm-hmm. than getting stopped. You know, our pallet identification spearing pickup is superior to anything else out there. Right. So now that we've really nailed that part of the, that segment, we've now actually gone down a size. Mm-hmm to the Cobot Pallet Jack to really address sort of some of the in-between workflows okay. that don't necessarily deserve a full forklift, right. but they are ripe for automation. Mm. And the reason we call it Cobot Pallet Jack is right. because it, it has much more of a partnership with the warehouse worker okay. in a real way, right? So think of it this way. This, a, a, a swarm of these pallet jacks, right? And a pallet mm-hmm. jack is sort of a very small... Right. device, but it can move full-size pallets. Yes. Yeah. So this pallet jack uh, is fully autonomous, mm-hmm. and a swarm of them basically show up where they're needed, and then the human worker can do the hard part of dealing with problems when you're loading and unloading a truck, or when right. you're dealing with material maybe not so well positioned on the pallet, whatever okay. it is, right? Yeah. There, there are always problems that humans have to deal with there. Right. So the swarm of pallet jacks just shows up. Human spears one, sends it on away on its way. Spears mm-hmm. the next one, sends it. Send. When I say spear, actually, I, I need to use the right <laughs> the right terminology for lay people. Yeah. When the when the human worker takes the pallet jack and loads the pallet onto it, we call it spearing. Okay. You're spearing right. the pallet. Yes. So they take that pallet jack, they pick up the pallet, mm-hmm. and then they press a button telling it where it needs to go, and that pallet jack just takes the pallet away. Got it. Immediately, the next pallet jack is there waiting for the human. They grab it, mm. they pick up the next pallet with it, they send it on its way. Okay. So what this allows is for a human worker that used to have to go pick up the one pallet mm-hmm. and then walk it or drive it all the way across the warehouse, right. come all the way back, then get the next one. Mm. Now we've turned that one worker into 10 workers. Right. Right? Because yeah. one person can now do the work of 10. Mm-hmm. And it's not that they're going to be nine less jobs. Yeah. That's not the world that we're in. Right. That means that, that that organization can actually keep up with demand now. Yeah, absolutely. So that's really exciting. It's very, very low cost. Robot as a service. Mm-hmm. $2,000 a month, all in. Oh, wow. The ROI is immediate. Yeah. And it's uh, just uh, really exciting from the point of view of now organizations that are maybe not the biggest retailers and right. manufacturers in the world can get into the automation game. Yeah, yeah. So that's one of the really exciting things that we've launched here at Modex. We've mm-hmm. got another really exciting concept product that we are showing. Oh, concept, okay. Yeah, yeah. kind of our concept car. Yeah. <laughs> and this is what we call the Vecna Omni. Okay. This is a high-reach, fully automated mm. forklift that can basically go into an eight-foot or larger aisle. Okay. And that's small. Yeah. A eight foot width is very small, mm-hmm. and it has a double deep reach. So it's basically able oh, to turn yeah. any standard warehouse mm-hmm. into a fully automated pallet, automated storage and retrieval system, or right, ASRS. Yeah. yeah, so taking like existing racking setup and making it automated. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. And, mm-hmm. and ASRSs are great, but the infrastructure costs and the time to set it up mm-hmm. is is a real impediment for most organizations. Yeah, absolutely. Right. You've got what what they call a brownfield site, mm-hmm. which is you know a site that already has racking in it or yeah, whatever. Existing, now yeah. you can take that existing warehouse and bring in this new technology and essentially get all the benefits of an ASRS mm-hmm. at a very very low cost price point. Right. Now, this is a concept vehicle. It's a fully functional prototype, but we're here at Modex showing it to get yeah. feedback on whether or not there is interest enough in this mm-hmm. for us to take it to full production in 2023. Right. And I have to tell you, the... the yeah, what's, what's, it's the, been, what's the feedback? It's been over <laughs> the top. I'm sure, yeah. Yeah, we're actually, we're actually getting people that are very interested in pre-orders, you know, wow, okay. sort of staking out their place in line. Yeah, yeah. 
because they said this is the problem that no one else has been able to solve so far. Yeah, yeah. So safe to say that it's going to go to production? It's, it, uh, <laughs> I would say chances are very good okay, that it's like going it. to go to production. But yeah, I won't make any any public predictions uh, or any public commitments at okay. this point because we need <laughs> we need to go back. We need to look at the yeah, data. Yeah. Right, you have to be disciplined about this stuff. You don't right. want to just chase something. But it's interesting because we've been looking at this space for a long, long time. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, our our goal in material handling is to be able to handle all of your pallet needs right. from, you know, from the loading dock mm-hmm. all the way through to storage, replan, order picking, case picking, etc. Yeah. The the whole entire gamut. And now we've got this entire range of vehicles. You know, we've always had a, a wide range of vehicles. Right to address a number of different use cases. Mm -hmm. But, you know, at this show, we're now showing the entire range, end to end, that will allow customers to meet all of their pallet handling needs with uh, with Beckner Solutions. Yeah, yeah, and I think that's a great thing. And obviously, you know, the the double reach automated is a huge thing as well. You know, as you, you mentioned taking that existing racking system and, and making it automated, I think it is a huge thing. It's going to be a, a game changer for those smaller businesses that can't really make the huge investments in ASRS systems. Yeah. Like you said, it's really going to change a lot of things for them. But this this Cobot pallet jack is pretty amazing. I mean, two thousand dollars a month i mean that's like you know you do a rental forklift i mean you're you're right in competition there pretty much that's uh, right. so that's right yeah so i, I mean that's it's pretty remarkable and and so now the when they load the pallet or they they spear the pallet right you guys spear. are creating new yeah new it sounds kind of gruesome here, right? doesn't right? it yeah um, spear that pallet <laughs> So when you spear the pallet, now the the I guess the collaborative part comes in at that point, right? So the operator is the one that's actually making sure that it gets, it gets engaged with the pallet, and mm-hmm. then it presses the button, I guess, and sends it on. Yeah, its it tells way. it yeah. where to go. I mean, and it can be in. It's all all of these products are integrated with our right. whole pivotal software suite. Yeah, yeah. So from the smallest robot to the largest robot, mm-hmm. there is this whole range of tools where, you know, it can just be the robot sort of going from point A to point B. Mm-hmm. You can have the full facility mapped and the robot can go anywhere it needs to. Yeah. If the robot needs help, it's able to reach out to our pivotal command center. Mm-hmm. This is how we have the industry leading uptime for our robots yeah. we have 99.9 percent uptime for the robots and that's because that's good yeah our, our robot software is amazing yeah and if the robot runs into a situation it can't handle on its own mm-hmm. it knows it right yeah. it's smart enough to know when it needs help mm-hmm. and then it knows how to ask for help yeah and so there's really not a situation where you know your, your robot is supposed to be delivering something and it just doesn't show up and you're kind of scratching your head. Well, where is that? You always know what's going on. And our pivotal orchestration engine is all about making sure that you've got the right resource in the right place at the right time. Mm-hmm. So whether it's a Cobot pallet jack or our tugger or our AFL, our autonomous forklift, right. or this new Vecna Omni, mm-hmm. they can all work together with the human workers to achieve optimal throughput for the facility. Yeah. You know, I was just talking to somebody about this, one of our customers, they're like, oh, but what is this pivotal thing? I don't really get it. Yeah. And I'm like, well, robots are dumb, humans are smart. Yeah. But you wouldn't dream of like deploying a bunch of employees mm-hmm. and like not telling them what to do. Yeah, where to go. Yeah. Where to go, what yeah. are the priorities, all of that kind of stuff, right? Yeah. Pivotal orchestration engine is all about that. Mm-hmm. And hey, do employees have questions sometimes? Do yeah. they need to know how to ask for help and who to ask for help from? Yes. Yeah. So we just provide all of that for the robots as well. And that's what that's what really maximizes the productivity of the team. Yeah. And the team being the humans and the robots, mm-hmm. the manually operated equipment the factory equipment and the conveyor belts and all of that all have to work together. It's one big system. Yeah. So yeah, we're really excited about being able to offer that end-to-end suite of solutions, but mm-hmm. the most important thing isn't the hardware. The most important thing is the software, the software and the planning itself. that goes yeah. behind all of it. We were able to show with one customer that when, when our pivotal orchestration engine is helping to coordinate the activities of not just the robots, but mm-hmm. the human workers as well, yeah. we were able to achieve two times throughput. Mm-hmm. Right, So we were able to get twice the amount of material through that facility wow. just by having better coordination 
between the humans and the robots. And it's not not that there was a bad throughput before. Right. right? It's yeah. not like we're not, not we're, we're not talking about like oh it was terrible and yeah yeah. No, it was like they had a good throughput. Yeah. The reason for that is perhaps not obvious, but it's that for a f- whole facility, at any one time, there is only one mm-hmm. bottleneck yeah. that's keeping that facility from moving more material. Right. And what our pivotal orchestration engine is all about figuring out where that bottleneck is mm. and applying resources mm. to eliminate that bottleneck in real time. Yeah. Anyway, so yeah, we're super excited. We've got all the right, we've got all the right robots. Mm-hmm. We've got the right support structure. We've got the pivotal orchestration engine. So we are just thrilled to be able to offer this sort of, I think, really comprehensive solution that n- nobody else has. And uh, you know, we would invite anyone to come visit some of our customers and see it in action mm-hmm. because it is impressive. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it sounds impressive. And, and obviously, you know, you just as you said, I was going to actually say it before you said it, but it's very comprehensive. And you have this ro- robust suite now of not only the the software, as you mentioned, which is, which is leading the way, and also the, the hardware aspect as well. But, you know, the, the software aspect, you know, you guys are doing such a great job with the with the software. You know, you know, one would think that, you know, you'd be very interested in, in keeping that maybe somewhat of a secret internally and, and using that as a, your competitive advantage. But, but you are actually, as we mentioned earlier, in the show, you know, a co-founder and, and president at Mass Robotics, and you've actually taken a lot of your, your knowledge and, and shared it with the industry, and you're actually looking to, to bring what may be considered competitors in, in the industry together, so that you guys yeah. can work together. So talk to us a little bit about, you know, how that kind of idea came about and, and, and what you guys are doing with Mass Robotics. Yeah, it's a great question, Kevin, and this is something I'm really passionate about. Right. This industry, robotics, Mm -hmm. material handling, AMRs, uh, is is really young. Right. And if you look at any other new industry, Mm -hmm. they always go through this very tumultuous period where people aren't working together. Mm -hmm. You've got a a handful of different organizations that all think they're going to be the one that owns everything. Yeah. That's not the way mature industries work. Mm -hmm. Right. We need to get together as an industry and have the appropriate amount of pre-competitive collaboration to solve problems that are common in the industry. Yeah. Right? Now, a few years ago, when I would start talking about interoperability, people would just roll their eyes. They're like, well, there's, you know, no robots out there anyway. Why would we need to have robots interacting with Mm -hmm. each other? Right. They're not doing that anymore. Yeah. And the, the reality is that we're doing this industry, we're doing our customers a huge disservice if we don't get ourselves organized enough to solve these problems for them, right? As an industry, we need to make it easy for them to buy. We need to remove obstacles. And one of those big obstacles is, well, I can't deploy my floor cleaning robot and my pallet moving robots Mm -hmm. because, you know, they're gonna they're gonna end up, you know, a floor cleaning robot going this way and a pallet moving robot going this way, yeah, and your pallet moving robot's and, gonna get cleaned, and everybody, yeah, yeah or whatever, <laughs> right? And it, it's just gonna be a nightmare. Yeah. So it's a very simple problem to solve mm-hmm. if you have interoperability. Yeah. Right. The mass robotics interoperability standard is about a super simple, like I can't emphasize how simple it is. Information sharing mm-hmm. API, yeah. or, or information sharing standard, where, hey, just tell me what you're doing, mm-hmm. Kevin. I'm going to tell you what I'm doing. Right. And now you can make more intelligent decisions about how you should do your thing, and I can make more mm-hmm. intelligent decisions about how I should do my thing. Yeah. But if you make it so nobody can communicate, then you run into problems. Yeah. So it's been actually pretty exciting because the number of robot companies that have implemented the Mass Robotics AMR standard is, right. is very, very high. Talked to a number of very large companies today mm-hmm. that said, yep, they're actually going around asking everybody, yeah. are you Mass Robotics AMR interop compliant? And if they say wow. no, they said, we're just walking away. Wow. wow. Now That's I said, I, I told them, yeah, yeah I, said, I said, don't just walk away. Yeah. I said, t- <laughs> tell them. And I, I gave them a handful of the, yeah, of yeah. the Mass Robotics AMR interop stickers. And I said, look, mm-hmm. They can go on the website, they can mm-hmm. follow the instructions, and they can be Mass Robotics AMR Interop compliant yeah. literally in a matter of hours. Yeah. It is that easy to do it. Wow. But if we all do it, that starts this virtuous cycle mm-hmm. of, sh- of collaborating, mm-hmm. of sharing information. And now you're going to do better, we're going to do better, the customer is going to be less hesitant to buy the things that they need to buy. Mm-hmm. It's just good for the entire industry. 
Yeah. We are just now starting, one, one of the big complaints and pieces of feedback we've gotten from the industry as well is that, hey, every single one of you robot vendors has your own charging solution. Mm -hmm. We, we're going to have to have a whole warehouse just of different chargers, <laughs> like yeah. for all these different, again, doesn't make any sense. Right. As an industry, we can get together mm -hmm. and figure this out. Yeah. And, and there will be some companies in the industry that are going to make money selling chargers. Right. But for the rest of us, that's not where we want to make our money. No. That's not where we're yeah. going to have our impact. I was just talking to a, a new company, I think it was Prime Robotics. Okay. And they said, yeah, and basically talked about how they're spending a lot of time dealing with charging issues. Mm -hmm. and they're like, yeah, nobody wants that. Yeah. It should be a problem that's solved across the industry. So Mass Robotics is taking this on. And the approach isn't to have Mass Robotics design a charging solution. Mm -hmm. What Mass Robotics does is acts as a convening body mm -hmm. to help the industry arrive eventually at common approaches that, that benefit everybody. Yeah. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be creating a GitHub repository where companies who have mm. charging solutions yeah. can basically commit to open source them, okay. put their charging solution out on this, and whether it's the robot side mm -hmm. or the charger side or yeah. anything in between, they can put that information out there and then others can start to not reinvent the wheel. Right. right. They can look on that repository and say, okay, look, here's a charging solution from Vecna. Here's one from this company. Here's one from that company. Yeah. This one really looks like it's great and it's going to meet our needs. Mm -hmm. So we're going we're gonna to implement this one. Yeah. And then that way we've got this very natural way for the industry to actually decide hmm. which charging solution is best. Yeah. Right. One of the problems with standard bodies often is that they will go off and they will like make decisions that they probably don't have enough information to make. Right or that they sometimes choose winners. Yeah. Right, and that's never really good when, you know, a, a, an industry association or a government body chooses winners and losers. Mm -hmm. But what we can do is we can facilitate a path for the industry to get to the right answers faster. Mm. And that's what this is all about. Make the information available so if we're willing to share that information, if mm -hmm. we're willing to say, "Hey, yeah, why don't you use the charging solution that we developed?" or "Hey, we'd be excited to use the charging solution that you've developed." Yeah. Everybody wins at the end of the day. Absolutely. And so that's the idea there. And there are going to be some other updates to the interoperability standard as well. So I, I'll tell people, look for a next version, okay. a version 2 draft coming out probably mid-year this year. Okay, great. So uh, very interesting stuff. I, I always really love talking to you, Daniel, because I think it's, it's just so insightful, not only into you know what you're doing with your with your projects, but just in the industry as a whole. And I think your your passion for the industry to grow together it, it certainly comes through very strongly. Yeah, and I think it's a, it's a great thing. And I know you said it, you said in there your passion is in the mass robotics, and and I think you know your your push for these interoperability standards and, and just you know hearing your passion here just about a charger, right? I, I mean, it is, it is great. And, and you can really tell that you care about, you know, the future of this industry, which you mentioned is, is you know, still relatively young. And there's yeah. a, lot of, a lot of room to grow. And I think, you know, your, your efforts are, are putting the industry on, on the right course to, to grow in, in the right way so that, you know, overall as an industry, the material handling industry will, will end up in the, the right spot when it comes to robotics and automation and, and really be able to, to give that advantage of utilizing robotics and automation to to all different types of businesses and businesses of all different sizes as well. So it really allows the the smaller businesses and the medium sized businesses to, to compete with those giants and those yeah. you know behemoths that we all we all know about. And it's really great to see you put those efforts in. Yeah, well, it's something that a lot of people are contributing to. Right. And I think that's the key, is we have to do it together. Yes. Yeah. And I have to give big kudos to, you know, the people whose full-time job is working at Mass Robotics. Right. Tom Ryden, Joyce, mm -hmm. Fady, lots of other people now. The organization has grown a lot. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears into helping this industry move forward in the best possible way. So, you know, my, my ask is that mm -hmm. people get involved. Right. You know... You could even say, hey, it's enlightened self-interest, mm -hmm. right? Come, contribute, participate, and that's going to help you make more money. Right. Frankly, that's not the reason I do it. I do it mm -hmm. because I've spent years trying to solve these problems for my own robotics company. Yeah. And I just feel like there's no need for everybody to struggle that yeah. much, mm -hmm. right? 
we've solved some of these problems. We should share that information. We should work together. It's a trillion dollar opportunity. Right. It's more money than any one of these companies could ever, 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 ever even hope to get a small portion of, right? Yeah. So we don't need to be fighting about, you know, mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. Let's all work together to unlock this. And that's what's going to help the human race move forward. Right. That's what's going to help make it easier for us to meet the needs mm -hmm. of the entire population of this planet in an efficient, sustainable way. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's not something that, you know, one person can do. That's got to be all of us effort, working yeah. together. Yeah, absolutely. All right. And, and we definitely appreciate you coming on and, and giving us this, this insightful information and, and talking to us about both Vecna and, and Mass Robotics as My always. Pleasure. If people want to find out more information about Vecna, how can they do that? Yeah, so just go to our website, VecnaRobotics.com. You can reach out to me on LinkedIn. Okay. I'm easy to find. Daniel Theobald, mm -hmm. LinkedIn. Mass Robotics, Vecna Robotics will come up. And I'm always happy to help in any way I can. Mm -hmm. A Mass Robotics website for the other yep. stuff. Yep. But yeah, you know, I encourage people to reach out. If you have questions, anything I can help you with, I, I probably know somebody that can help you if, if I don't have an answer. All right. And yeah, and love to, uh, love, to, uh, love to connect. All right, great. We'll put all that information at thenewwarehouse.com as well. So, Daniel, thank you once again for coming by the booth and, and chatting with us, and I hope you enjoy the, the rest of the show. You've been listening to the New Warehouse Podcast with Kevin Lawton. Subscribe and check us out online at thenewwarehouse.com. Thank you for listening to this episode. If you want more content from The New Warehouse, check out our new video series called All Hands on LinkedIn. Just search for The New Warehouse on LinkedIn and follow along.